basically says, hey guys, uh, you made some pretty good clones. Um, unfortunately, we're gonna have to let you go. Basically does the Im Imperial corporate speak of, um, we no longer have any synergy. We are going to have to trim the fat. We're basically gonna use fiber now. Sorry guys. Welcome to Death Watch, the Star Wars podcast from a galaxy not so far, far away. I'm Mike Bennett. And I'm Chris Cole. And today we'll be talking about the Clone Wars season three. Uh, I'm sorry, the Bad Batch episode one. <laughs> I mean, basically is season three of the Clone Wars. Um, it literally will pick up right where the show, the Clone Wars ends. Well, both the series and the events that we see in the Star Wars timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time we're experiencing from the perspective of the eight, I mean, of the, uh, of the Bad Batch. <laughs> yeah, it actually, this, it is interesting. This specific moment in time is overlapped by both the animated series and the movies. Mm -hmm. um, and even in a way that in the opening credits, they had to recreate some of the live action scenes yeah. because they're part of, you know, the, like, so what was cool about this is they started with that same narrator who mm -hmm. uh, voiced the the uh, Admiral, what's his face? Yeah. Uh, Yalarin and uh, sort of like news from the battlefront, like in the 1940s um, World War Two updates. Mm -hmm. But they go over like Grievous's capture of the of of Chancellor Palpatine and yeah. Anakin and Obi-Wan freeing them and all of the stuff. It just summarizes real quick. Hey, here's what happened. And then we're like still moments towards the end of the, of the movies. Um, but it is, you know, it's, it's really interesting. You know, like you said, you, it starts by the logo burning away yeah. into the bad batch logo. That's, that's showing pretty you, symbolic. Like I'm yeah. trying to figure out what the symbolism is, but like, um, it, it's there intentionally. Yeah. It's symboling, symbolizing, uh, Anakin's <laughs> turn to Darth Vader. Oof. Oof. Turning to um, burnt, burnt toast, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Burnt Vader. Um, <laughs> burnt Vader. <burnt, laughs> yeah. But obviously, it's a continuation. This is still a Dave Filoni project, mm -hmm. like the Clone Wars was initially. Um, and, uh, you know, it picks up the same, has the same aesthetic and vibe as the original series, uh, an updated level of graphics from the previous iteration. But it does look a lot like season seven, which was kind of. The new level of graphics. Um, the music's also done by Kevin Kiner. Dee Bradley Baker comes in to, um, you know, voice the 400 millionth clone <laughs> type. Um, 404th millionth clone. Yeah, he probably has more IMD, IMDB uh, roles than any other person, <laughs> even though uh, 4 million of them are the same, <laughs> are yeah. clones of the same. <laughs> that man, he's a he deserves some some kind of an award um so many so many clones that he has to keep track of in his head and he gives them like a different identifier in the yeah, script it's got like, like a wall of the pictures that like his one word identifier yeah like uh, that um the picture of like uh which is charlie from uh it's always sunny in philadelphia <laughs> here's 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 rex here's Crosshair. This is like that's what I see out there. It's just like one long conspiracy theory trail of like how of who who needs to voice or how each of the clones are, are voiced. It's crazy. Totally. Like it's it's really impressive how he does that. Yeah. Now, um, as of the time of this recording, there's three episodes that are already out, but today we're just going to focus on the first one, titled aptly titled Aftermath. And since the show, uh, since this show opener rather has a runtime of 75 minutes, it feels like a movie. Mm -hmm. So, and there's a lot that's happening in just this one episode. So we're going to punch it and jump right into it. Great. So yeah, this, this episode, it's, I'll just briefly chat about overall how, how it felt. Um, it, it feels a lot like the way the force awakens felt in that, like you get introduced to sort of a new set of characters or familiar set of characters, um, and then there's all of these like connections to previous films or or episodes and um, storylines that you like you knew about, but now you're going to get another layer of information about it. Um, and it like in the same way that in The Force Awakens, like they go to destroy a large planet destroyer, like mm -hmm. um, <laughs> evil weapon. Um, it's like the same. It feels like the same kind of uh, vibe as you're watching it. So. Um, 
yeah, the episode opens up like it was, like we said, the same narrator from the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. um, Admiral Yolaren's voice. Um, we see we see the quick update of where we are in the timeline. Obi Wan and Anakin have rescued Palpatine, and Grievous flees and and initiates a sort of last ditch effort by the Separatist armies to to try to push back against the Republic. Um, and as always in those episode intros. It ends with where the episode is going to start by looking at um, Jedi Master Deepa Palaba, which Mm -hmm. as soon as that popped up, first of all, I was like, "Uh, wait, who is that again? I was like, so I knew I knew it was someone important. Um, And so even the reveal slightly after it was like mind blowing. Um, But you see Deepa Palaba the same way they kind of cut through other Jedis and what they're doing. Um, She's fighting at the, at the front of the, the battle lines with the clones next to her droid armies are launching uh, bombs over at them. And then it cuts into the episode. We get, we get a conversation between her clone commander um, who I saw some controversy about him. He was identified as like a commander and he was a captain or I don't know. I don't remember I think, exactly. I think technically captain, captain gray, but whatever, uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, we see that they're like pinned down. They're obviously waiting for resources and the clones like, reinforcements. If if, yeah, right. Your reinforcements. And you're like, if, if the commander doesn't get here soon, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're SOL. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, at, at first, like, kids. yeah, at first I hear, um, commander and I'm, I'm like thinking like commander Cody or commander mm-hmm. Rex. It mm-hmm. does not quite clicking at, the, at that point that like Ahsoka and all the other Padawans are, given the rank of commander um and then you hear like a voice w- what was your reaction to this like on-screen appearance here i mean when i knew i knew that deepa bilaba her padawan was caleb doom and if you hadn't figured out who caleb doom is by that time it's it's also he grows up to be kanan jarrus from star wars rebels um so when i saw her name being dropped and we see her like oh you know Mini Mini Kanan shouldn't be too far. Uh, what I was surprised with, uh, well, first of all, how he like cowabungas his way down <laughs> down the mountain step to like you know to regroup regroup totally. with her with his master. But I was s- surprised that it still sounded like Freddie Prince Jr. Um, but just like I guess they they adjusted the pitch a little bit, or maybe he just like adjusted his voice a little bit so that it appeared you know appeared younger. Yeah, you could uh, you could hear him modifying it slightly. Yeah, <laughs> a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. So he he says he he comes up, he shows up, he says he's by himself, and he says he found reinforcements. But then like Captain Gray and 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 Deep Bubble are like uh, where but, <laughs> where are they? It goes oh yeah they they were right behind me. It goes and then Captain Gray's like how many are there he goes oh there's only five of them oh we're doomed that's it we're we're, it was like the same way when in the mandalorian finale and they're like oh there's one x-wing and cara dune's like oh great one x-wing we're saved saved. (laughs) (laughs) but then you know to um all of a sudden there's like a rumble in the tree line and all the droids just stop and start looking and start shooting at it and then a la raiders of the lost ark this giant boulder just comes in and just (laughs) smashes away half the droid infantry Mm -hmm. and then a second later the theme song the theme song starts to play bad batch come out of nowhere and they start clearing out the other half yeah we get like a a 60 second recap of what every what everyone is what their like uh stereotype is on the (laughs) on the on the team um you know we recap that the bad batch refers to clone force 99 as we remember back from the Clone Wars series, 99 was um, a, a disfigured clone, a, a failed clone, so to speak, but uh, was a, a friend to all of the clones who went through Camino, and they named their force after him as sort of being, you know, the Clone it's Force 99 are a bunch of, yeah, it's an homage to this guy because they're also um, sort of altered or uh, they they didn't come out the right way the bit mm-hmm. of bad batch referring to like a, a cooking a batch of clones um they <laughs> came out the wrong way just like him um yeah and like wrecker wrecker rex tech techs crosshair snipes hunter hunts you know uh, the only the only i guess offshoot um is echo 
which yeah he is, yells into into caves it goes echo 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's really annoying yeah yeah i can't wait to see that superpower yeah. coming clutch they have that uh like very stereotypical like it just makes it real easy like who are these guys um this, yeah, like big, what what their name big, is is what they guy do. likes to smash things and blow stuff up we're gonna call him wrecker totally yeah and so let's call the nerd the obvious nerd with glasses tech yeah totally let's call the rambo looking dude hunter <laughs> yep. so yeah they um but we get to see in that very quick snippet exactly why they're sort of the um i guess i wouldn't say i wouldn't call them commandos but why they're the special forces of of the clone troops because of how efficient and you know proficient they are at dispatching their their enemies and i thought this one cool tr- trick i guess was crosshair and wrecker working together where magically crosshair is able to like snipe across hundreds of yards rope that totally ex- crazy. exactly at the moment that they attach between these two these three tanks and then wrecker is able to like basically play crack the whip and uh and dispatch of the uh, heavy infantry yeah but they get the job done you know they they clear out that particular battalion of of or that wave of clones and they regroup with general balaba and, and captain gray yeah and then um you know they're obviously having experienced a, a minor victory clearing out this group they're like all right we need to like press the advantage continue on and take them out and mm-hmm. uh tech has like hacked into the republic communications network and he's like we may not need to because it sounds like general kenobi has got a line on general grievous and he's going to be taking him out very soon on Utapau. and yeah. like it's kind of at this moment like a lot of the events like we know are about to happen and um you know it's all clicking really like <laughs> what is imminent yeah um, and it's happening very fast too yeah ex- like it fast. is yeah. it is crazy i mean like you know we see older Kanan in the Rebels series um, really experiencing what, you know, definitely what I would call post-traumatic stress disorder being around Rex and some of the other clones and recounting his experience of this moment. And like, it is just insane how quickly it goes from like fighting with my buddies Mm -hmm. to all of a sudden they're shooting at me and they just killed my master. Um, Yeah. And so uh, we we see uh, what's his name? Commander gray step mm-hmm. off to the side he gets his hologram communicator out and we see the, the iconic you know hologram of emperor palpatine saying execute order 66 and yeah the like flip in all of the clones is like pretty i mean they go from like jovial personalities to like robots like i know mm-hmm. we've we saw in the clone war series one or two of the clones inhibitor chips malfunctioned and we saw them the way that they were kind of like good soldiers follow orders they just kind of like kept repeating it yeah and they kind of were like in a trance but now to see like all of the clones doing that simultaneously it was it was pretty striking you said something important that's going to be a callback in a couple of seconds um in this sequence the uh after so deepa balaba is her her f- troops turn on her she tells kanan to run and um, he sees what's going on. So he he was about to follow the Bad Batch to, you know, to take out the remaining separatist troops. So when they see what's going on and they try to regroup with him, he's like, you know, defensive, stay back. He doesn't, he can't trust anyone at this point. He runs. So um, they ask, or Hunter asks Wrecker and Tank to basically act as interference. And he asks Crosshair to join him so that he can, they can go get, um caleb but unfortunately both hunter and crosshair this is the beginning of what we see a very strained relationship they each have different agendas and as they're going off you know the other clones that we're just talking about order 66 they're trying to figure out what what exactly that means it doesn't really affect them or so we think um hunter and crosshair chase caleb into the into the thick of the forest um Hunter is basically, we got to find him to save him. Crunter, Hunter, uh, Crosshair rather is basically, you know, shoot the kill. And we hear, we hear him repeating those words. Good soldiers follow orders. 
Yeah. Well, what was chilling too is like, I remember from the Rebel series, uh, Kanan recapping what the last words he heard his master say, and it's run. And Mm -hmm. that is, you hear it, but it's also like the desperation in her. It's like her last breath coming out in like a shriek and a cry. Um, Mm -hmm. It was, it was made more than just like, oh, hey, run. It was like, I'm dying, run. Yeah. And and we actually expired. Yeah. We actually get to see it as it's happening. Um, tech tips off Hunter that they figure out what Order 66 means, which is to remove all Jedi from the playing field. Hunter's like, okay, but which, but which ones? And tech is like, all of them. So they're confused. Yeah. They don't know what's what's going on. Hunter and Crosshair finally do catch up with Caleb. Hunter's trying to take a diplomatic approach. You know, he even takes off his helmet. Like, mm-hmm. kid, calm down. I'm just as confused as you are. I want you to be safe. Crosshair, on the other hand, is following orders yeah so when it seems apparent at this point that like the the inhibitor chip that we're aware of doesn't seem to function in the same way that it does in all the other clones in Mm -hmm. in clone force 99 yeah exactly the um caleb we know because he obviously grows up to be kane and jarris we see him flee he jumps a ravine using a force jump uh so it's like one kid. of the farthest jumps we've ever seen. I think yeah. I remember seeing Ezra do a similar type jump later, um, but it is a, it is a huge jump. It's a canyon, yeah. But he's able to get to the other side safely. It's an important detail um, because Crosshair meets up with Hunter and he goes, "Oh yeah, the kid, uh, kid's, oh. kid's gone. You don't have to worry about him." And um, Crosshair sort of challenges that when they're back on the ship on their way back home he's like you you were looking across and you not looking down, down. Mm-hmm. so that's an important detail and also goes to show the the ability of the character crosshair like he he's dependent on his eyes he's a sniper so he has to look at those important details mm-hmm. so the team makes their way back home and uh, tech says they've been gone for 180 rotations which i had to look up i never I never understood what that meant. A rotation is relative to the, um, uh, c- I guess, the uh, celestial rotation of Coruscant. So however long it takes for it to rotate on its axis one time, which is basically a day, is what they consider a rotation. So that so like so, the galaxy uses a Coruscant standard? Yes. Or at least, yeah. obviously, I'm sure locally you've referred to the sun rising and falling, but uh, a, a galactic standard run rotation refers to Coruscant's spin one day yeah exactly so so in short they've been gone for 180 days and i feel like it and i think think it's interesting that for them home is camino like they weren't really stationed on coruscant or anywhere else they just their stuff is in camino their training is in camino so Mm -hmm. they consider camino their home yeah which i think all clones do yeah because in 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 the clone war is when there, there's an attack on Camino that mm-hmm. Massage Ventress yeah, helps lead true. that attack. It's like an attack on our home is how they like frame that. Yeah, that's true. But they they show up and already from the get go something doesn't seem right. Um, all of a sudden they're being tracked by uh, in their in their airspace. They show up at the hangar. Uh, they're treated differently. I think the big uh, tell um, is one the chorus on guard being on Camino, like what business does the Coruscant guard have to be there? Right. And, and two, what is obviously a, a, a fallen Jedi on, on a stretcher, which is not something that a clone would see, want to see. Yeah. It was, um, Oh, why can't I remember her name? She had the, the striped ventral. Was, I don't think it was, I don't think it was shock. You're thinking of shock T, but Shakti. I don't think it was her. I thought it was shock T. It looked like her. I thought, I and, thought and, so too. And she was, she was like the Jedi, instructor like the of mom. the clones yeah she was like the mom of the jedi yeah the house of, mom of the, of the clones sorry mm-hmm. but the, whoever it was had green skin shakti had red skin oh, okay i saw that detail again i'm like i had to look it up I'm like wait wait a minute i don't Got i don't it. think it was her but either way we don't know what happened to shakti uh we can we can only assume because she was already on Camino, you know ground zero so to speak so um tech starts mentioning that the regs as they call them which is the uh non-altered Clones, regulation clones re- regulation clones rather they have mm-hmm. their embedded programming and um and, and, they, and they're all like they're walking like like zombies they're just moving they like bump into like knock them over because they're just marching in a straight line without like mm-hmm. almost a, a, 
attention to what's in front of them. They are like in, in, in some kind of like trance is how it looks. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. It's very, it's very strange. The, uh, the clones are making their way back to their barracks and they're, you know, sort of talking about and mulling over exactly what happened. Uh, and then tech reveals this embedded programming and they're like, what are you talking about? And I think this is part of why I think, uh, tech's actually one of my favorite characters because like, Oh, I thought you guys, I thought you guys knew about that already. Oh, okay. So he, he reveals that embedded programming and he says, you know, likely we're not affected, but, and then he says, I'm not a hundred percent certain of it. And he looks directly at crosshair as it's, as it's happening. Not not so subtle. Mm -mm. (laughs) Not, 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 not in the least bit. Right. And then at this point they're called to, uh, kind of an all hands meeting of the clones on base. Um, they come into this giant room, which seems like where the cafeteria was from the attack of the clones mm-hmm. movie when they're all eating lunch and looking like each other. <laughs> um, and we check out the, the Dallas Cowboys big screen TV, the thing that <laughs> hovers over the field. Um, the, the jumbo gram. Yeah. The jumbo gram. Um, and we get an animated version of this, the live action speech that Palpatine gives from revenge of the sith mm-hmm. when he's standing in the chamber of the senate and he says the galactic republic will be reorganized as and it's like this really dramatic punch yeah. punctuated se- sentence and then we get that it's that moment we get that awesome line from padme mm-hmm. which is just like so this is how our freedom dies with thunderous applause like the ignorance of everyone not seeing what's happening here yeah. um your freedoms are being stripped if you don't understand what an empire is versus a republic um and this is like where we sort of meander into like what i joke about the prequels were like hey i wonder what star wars would be like if we focus mostly on government and politics um but this is like an important like distinction of like that the way things are organized in a Republic is that p- people have representation and there's some kind of accountability of leadership and in, in an empire. There's not, there's, yeah, it's like, yeah, you gotta do what uh, she Palp says. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so they, they, they play that, um, hologram and they kind of, they're looking at each other. They start to make their way back to their barracks while they're talking about it. And they notice, um, and it, I love that they, you know, obviously every they're all from New Zealand, even though they're cloned on Camino. But when this new character is introduced, um, she pronounces her name Omega. Omega. My name's Omega. Um, which is really just an, it's a New Zealand accent of Omega. Um, yeah. And I remember seeing it written, and then, and then she's like, "Oh, my name is Omega," and I was like, oh, "That's a weird way to pronounce it." And then I was Omega. like, "Oh, that's a New Zealand accent." Yeah, exactly. Perfect. I love that they did that. So to add um, to and that, her and character was, is super yeah. interesting. Yeah, to add to that, they actually casted a New Zealand actress, Michelle Ang, um, who is a native New Zealander. And I feel like that's an important detail because it's a more truer homage to Django Fett's uh, actor, Tamora Morrison, and his uh, heritage. So to have someone that's not only giving on a more authentic accent, but is an actual uh, actor of that of that heritage i think was a very very good addition yeah all we need is now her like tribal gaffy stick that she drags and smashes skulls with as, <laughs> as, of, like the time of, <laughs> as of the time of this recording we have yet to see a gaffy stick but i'm holding off for episode four yeah she's uh she's quite innocent in that way and, and not a, a mass murdering psychopath like boba fett is yet <laughs> yet yet um and uh at, sort of at this moment um uh, what's her name? Um, the the Kaminoan Nala Sang, who we like. She was in Attack of the Clones when Obi Wan first comes and is surprised with the fact that there's a clone army waiting for him. <laughs> she's like the the minister of like the. She's not the leader, but she's like the, the director. Uh, sort of. She's like the marketing facility. director. Yeah, public relations. <laughs> um, she's the PR and, lady, and and she's got her hands full right now. Yeah, and she kind of pops in and she's like, all right, like you're not supposed to be hanging out here. We got to go. Then kind of explains that she's her medical assistant um, Mm -hmm. and needs her back to continue to move on. Um, And then we transition to 
a ship lands and Admiral Tarkin walks out kind of in the same way that like Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine walk out in the original trilogy movies, like Mm -hmm. down the, the gangway of the uh, Lambda shuttle and he's flanked by clone troopers. Um, and I, I like, I love his appearance here. It totally makes sense for who he ended up being part of, like what his role is in the, in the empire when we see Mm -hmm. him later. Um, but he he's voiced by Guy Henry, who voiced him in the live action appearance of him in Rebels, where they did the motion cat or not Rebels, sorry, Ro- Rogue One, mm-hmm. where they and I th- maybe he did do it in, in Rebels too. I, think I so forgot too, to look that up. Tarkin does make an appearance, and he yeah he, he several sort times of, sort of butts heads with Thrawn. Yeah, he's um, like his nemesis or um, like his competition. Yeah, but. Um, he, the same actor who actually did the the physical acting of Tarkin, who they replaced with mo- motion capture, like hologram, uh, was it the face app? <laughs> um, but yeah, so he comes down and uh, his delivery is incredible. Yeah. Snapchat and, filters these days are crazy, man. I know this bad batch brought to you by Snapchat. <laughs> uh, swipe left. Um, that's that's a different thing. Never mind. The- um, so <laughs> we are. Um, it was, we begin to be, let's see. Um, so I forget what happens. He, he comes off the, and he starts to kind of like, what is he doing here? Yeah. I don't understand. He makes his way over to talk to the prime minister and Nala say, and basically says, Hey guys, uh, you made some pretty good clones. Um, unfortunately we're going to have to let you go. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna, he basically does the Im- imperial corporate speak of, um, we no longer have any synergy we are going yeah. to have to trim it's the, the fat. ultimate flex because he's like, we don't need any more clones. They're like, well, we have a contract, an ongoing yeah. contract we're, to make them. We're basically going like, to use Fiverr now. He's like, Sorry, your contract guys. is with the Republic, which no longer exists. We're not the Republic. We, oh. we're, we're the Empire. So I don't know who you're talking about, but it's not us. <laughs> that is uh, a major strategic bad guy loophole. Like that right. is clever well and this is an important like um distinction for like where what happens to the clones over the next you know some period of time is that when we see them the stormtroopers in the original trilogy and even in the rebels animated series we know that they're conscripted soldiers they're not Mm -hmm. um clones and understanding why we get here it's like it comes down to like one they say budget which is like clones cost like 10 to 1 what a um, a conscripted soldier's costs, even yeah. if they fight at 10 to one quality, um, it's they're like, we don't care. Yeah. Um, I also the- see this as like, this is how the empire employs, like begins to like employ the galaxy and put them under like their, uh, their control in one way that like the number of stormtroopers they need to sign up yeah. gets a large percentage of the galaxy just working for the military. Mm-hmm. Um, and is you know it's very interesting to see that to me this is the true beginning of the like the empire was already failing before it even began just by looking at their their budget sense it's like you're telling me that you have superior product that you are not willing to invest in and you're you're willing to replace it for inferior product Mm -hmm. for a fraction of the cost yeah the the empire basically the empire basically went from five star restaurant to McDonald's overnight. Yeah. Just, just like, with that well, one you still decision. get fed anyway. What's the, what's the big deal? Uh, and yeah, <laughs> half of us are going to die of diabetes and heart attacks, but at least, at least we get to eat. I mean, you're still going to get peace and security in your new empire. So totally. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously there's a fight breaks out with her, um, in that like large area, they seem to, um, whatever they, they end up in this argument echo gets knocked out yeah. they're in the med bay he wakes up um and there's like a mention like the admiral doesn't seem to be a fan of clones yeah um and then th- like that moment they get summoned to kind of like show what they're made of he, he tarkin he's like I've, I've heard of you guys want to see what you can do um and demonstrate what you can do in the training field yeah but while we wait for clone force 99 to show off what they can do in front of the admiral Let's take a quick break and let you hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back. And we're back. So the Bad Batch boys are summoned to the training field where they think it's just another typical training simulation. 
and uh, which they're able to dispatch easily. Tarkin flips the script on them. And this, like, what was cool about this is this is uh, like a remake of the one of the earlier Clone Wars episodes when they, I think it's season two or three, when they flash back mm-hmm. to like the early days of uh, uh, several of the clones we follow all the way through the wars. Yeah. And their, their squad, um, Domino squad, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Going through the training process and seeing the, the dummies that pop up and how they're supposed to work together. And it's pretty, it's a pretty, um, textbook test. Uh, yeah. but then, uh, at, once they're making it look easy, uh, Tarkin flips the script on them, right? <laughs> yeah. Not only does he, does he make it so that it's now a live fire scenario, we, he shows up or rather he dispatches what, we realize are like early versions or like a prototype of the dark troopers mm. that we saw in the Mandalorian. Yeah. And um, if, if it was tough for one Mandalorian, one skilled Mandalorian to take on a single dark trooper, imagine, you know, five, you know, even though they're enhanced clones, you know, it was a, take it was an interesting a squad of those dark troopers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and then on the top of that, their weapons are basically useless. So he, yeah. he doesn't give them a bad hand. He like literally takes the hand away from them and it's like, okay, continue to play poker, but with your fists, which <laughs> yeah. they which they do proceed to do pretty pretty right. successfully. Wrecker um, does his thing and just starts yeah. smashing things. Um, he actually got shot too, which I thought was like almost yeah. like an ad sort of added a flare of drama to the situation. Yeah. They, um, they literally have their hands full. He, um, they, but what, what, what's great about their, their team is their ability to be able to improvise. You know, they say that they disobey orders or they deviate from instruction and mission parameters and things like that. But that's also what's kept them alive up to now. And they show that in this particular, you know, fight sequence, uh, echo wrecker, uh, Echo does, you know, he shows you what he can do with like his his mechanized like drill, I think, whatever whatever oh, right. you want to call it, you know, he's his little he basically, his connector arm, yeah, so his uh, droid probe, whatever he's like shocking, not shocking, but disabling the uh, the dark troopers by the neck. Wrecker is pinning them down. Tech is literally hacking at a droid, and he pulls a BB-8 on an ATST move and starts like piloting it and starts shooting, uh, shooting the other dark troopers with its, you know, with similar type ammunition. So they're able right. to dispatch several of them all at once. Um, and then the final one, which gives them a little bit of trouble, they pull this super clutch, uh, crosshair literally snipes a knife into the last droid to to knock it down. So that sequence was pretty interesting because it shows you before that they don't they don't quit. You know, they're willing right. to work, you know, how they work together. They work great as a unit. Um Tarkin unfortunately does not like that. You know, you can tell that he thought that he had the upper hand. He's like, yeah, I can prove finally that these clones are not all that. And right. and they prove him wrong. So Yeah. He was looking for a good excuse to kind of dismiss clones out of hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he, he walks off stage with N- Nala say while we're leaving the, the boys to pick themselves up. Right. So we move on. We, we switch from Star Wars to the Matrix and get to see all of the people in the test tube tanks. Um, I, I always think about that every time. It's literal we test see tube Camino. Babies. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we're looking at Omega and he's asking how many of these uh, enhanced clones do you possess? Uh, you know, we know Echo doesn't count, but, um, you know, if you hadn't figured it out, they're talking about Omega. Omega. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of assumed that Tarkin, well, he's looking at her. So it's sort of, does he, he may have his, his suspicions. Like, does she, does he know? Does he not know? Uh, but yeah. yeah. Why is she special? Exactly. And yeah. We don't know. I mean, if she's a clone of a male and she's a female, there's a, yeah. you know something there already. Yeah, it leads you to the question: It's a mutation. Um, yeah, was that specific mutation um, intent in um, intentional, or was that part of the defect that she just happened to be born female? Um, and then there's a conversation that they have: is 
uh, with uh, regarding um, the Squad 99, that they're defective, but they have enhanced abilities. So when they say that there's five of them that are like that, and we can surmise that Omega is the fifth one, the question is, what are her enhanced abilities? We haven't really seen oh, anything true, yet. Because Echo is not an enhanced yeah. clone. He's he's a he's a tortured prisoner of war clone who just happens yeah. to have special abilities because of it. Right. No big deal. Yeah. So, uh, what I what I found interesting as part of that conversation though is that Tarkin mentions that uh, there is a counter report filed by one of their own. He says, and that the Padawan um, Caleb Dune escaped. Mm-hmm. Like immediately, I knew like Crosshair has been acting super sus up to this point. So yeah. I would I would definitely have assumed that it was he the one who filed that so called counter report, which means he basically snitched on his team. Yeah, I definitely saw crosshair by the power generator. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that's we. Should, anyway, do do you play? Um, what's it called? Well, stranger. No, what's it called? Um, the game where they say sus. Yes, oh. Among Us. Among Us. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, like was, basically I, Star Wars. I totally, I totally saw crosshair hanging around in the in the in the ducks in the air vents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so they we're moving on from this situation and they're being sort of um, reassigned on a mission, sort of proved to Tarkin that they're worth keeping around. They've been told that they're going to Onderon, which should trigger for you remembering from the Clone Wars. It's a place we've been. Um, we It's where Rex and Anakin train the first version that we see of Saw Gerrera and his rebels on Onderon, sort of like in an unofficial capacity, kind of like, um, like, uh, military advisors to like the Iraqi army or Afghanistan yeah. army or whatever. Like mm-hmm. we're not fighting for the Republic here. We're training you to fight for yourselves kind of thing. Um, but it still benefits the Republic. Exactly. Um, and so they're going there and, um, just before they ship off, Omega tries to warn Hunter about Tarkin's intentions yeah. and says that Camino is not safe anymore, uh, which is really interesting. And yeah, Hunter we don't kind know. Of shrugs it off, heads onto yeah. the ship. Yeah, they don't know specifically what she's referring to, but I get. I think you can just add this on to another clue to whatever it is that um, Omega Omega can do. Yeah. So they do. Um, they basically uh, ship off. On they're on their way over to um, to Onderon. They land, and they do end up making their way over to the quote unquote insurgents camp. But the problem is that according to their scans, one, there are no droids because they were told that it was separatist insurgents. Right. There's definitely all people. And two, they're definitely dealing with old folks and children. Women and children, yeah. Exactly. So Crosshair is like, Tarkin said insurgents. He didn't say anything about droids. So he's right. very keen on trying to finish the mission no matter what. But um, Hunter once again objects. And he realizes that they're not alone. And sure enough, the insurgents sort of, they, you know, surround them. Yes. They pop, pop out of the bushes, they connect. And then, you know, it's, it clicks for Hunter. He's like, Oh, you're saw Carrera. I know you, you trained with general Skywalker and, and commander Rex. Um, and they, they kind of, they're like, we were here to kill separatist insurgents. Have you seen them kind of thing? And mm-hmm. they're like, we are them. And if you think like the empire is any diff, like is any good in any way, like you, you're so far off, you're lost. The empire is just going to press their hand, like press everyone down under their thumb. Um, you know, very, uh, unhopeful is like, this is the worst is about to happen. You think the clone wars are over, but like the real war is about to begin kind of thing. Yeah. Um, he gives them he gives them a warning to adapt and survive or to die with the past. It's like he basically yeah. gives them Sagarera gives them the choice. You know what you do now is up to you, right? Um, and so you know they decide obviously not to fight them. Uh, they leave them there, uh, and Crosshair challenges Hunter's leadership. Like you, you don't have the leadership ability to carry out your orders you were, we were ordered to kill these people and you you're disobeying orders and it's sort of this like echoing of the good soldiers mm-hmm. follow orders thing that keeps coming up um yeah and the tension is just 
really rising, blowing up on on their squad. Yeah, and what doesn't help is the fact that they've been spied on. Uh, there's an Imperial pro droid nearby. Hunter's able to, you know, sense it, and he's able to take it down. So they realize that Tarkin has been spying on them, making sure that they were that they were able to complete the mission or not, which they don't. Right. So they know that okay, we're found out. What do we do? Let's just get out of here. We can't go back to Camino. Um, and Hunter's like, well, no, we can't. We 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 got to go back. At that point, Tech sort of. And I think this is kind of why another reason why I think he's my favorite character because of how, the lack of tact that he has kind of makes him unique. Is like, oh yeah, by the way, Omega's a clone. And they're like, what? What? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's not it's not surprising because she's got heightened awareness. Of course, she'd be a little paranoid that you know something's wrong with Camino. And because you do this the okay, whole time, like, yeah, I thought you guys knew. Why would it be? Why would it be obvious? It kind of went over everybody's heads, you know. But he realized, you know, so adding to that, that's another reason why Hunter says we have to go back to Camino. We have to go and get her because it's not safe for for her. Yeah. Um, but he again, he makes that decision knowing full well that Tarkin's going to be gunning for them when they get back. Yeah. And as soon as they do make it back, um, it comes up, you know, almost right away. Tarkin expresses his disappointment and accuses them of conspiring with Saw Gerrera. Uh, it goes, it goes south pretty quick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So they don't have to get too far to split up and find Omega. turns out when they, uh, when Tarkin and the guards arrive, they get immediately get sent to the brig and, uh, look, you know, lo and behold, who's waiting for them is Omega. So, you know, happy reunion. Um, they're completely stripped of their armor. They're put behind a small cell behind a ray shield. Um, so it's at that it's that time that Crosshair, you know, they're of course their tensions are rising to a crescendo. He takes that time to air out his grievances about, you know, accusing Hunter of being soft that he's been making all the wrong decisions ever since Caller. Uh, and again, he repeats, "Good soldiers follow orders." At this point, yeah. Omega, I think she starts to show off, and I theorize that what makes her special is less. Uh, physical, like compared mm -hmm. to the other clones, you know, like senses or strength, uh, but it's more emotional. Her abilities are more mental, like like an empath. And yeah. she tries to empathize with uh, Crosshair, you know, the one person who's like doesn't care about her, would honestly leave her for dead in a moment's notice. She's the one going up to him and says, I know you're angry. Please don't do what you're about to do. I know what you're going to do. <laughs> Yeah, and what you what you're doing is you don't have any control of. She's basically saying, "I know what you're about to do, and I forgive you for it." Yeah, it's oh, it's almost that like like Jedi intuition, like mm -hmm. sensing the moment before it happens. It's crazy, which would be insane a, a Jedi clone. <laughs> um, Oof. yeah, we'll get into that later. Um, I don't so, know if there are any any clones from New Zealand. Oh, sorry, Je Jedi from New Zealand. Um, yeah, that would be, is, that would be pretty special. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, so they're they're in this cell, and then they have like a real typical like uh, um, like prisoner breakout sequence where they um, they cough, make a little noise, and and Wrecker like pounds the wall and knocks a panel loose, um, which allows Omega to crawl up through a duct vent, which you know. I, as an architect, we know you don't design duct vents to go into jail cells and out to the free area. Let alone make them people-sized, you know, conveniently enough for people to literally go. The crawl spaces, air ducts are not crawl spaces. Crawl spaces are meant for crawling. Air ducts are not crawl spaces. You know yeah. how much dust uh, and debris and dirt? Like, ew. Yeah. Skin yeah. just in your, ugh. Gross, man. So anyway, she takes advantage of this poor... Uh, HVAC contractors logic and escapes drops down and like is very formidable in battle, like knocks out the two um, like prison guard troopers who are there. Yeah. Um, and well, and she literally gets the rest the drop of the crew. On them. So that <laughs> is a sort of yeah. unfair advantage. She, she pulls an Obi-Wan and has the high ground on them. So, but she know. doesn't say hello there. <laughs> 
that's mildly disappointing. Yeah. Mildly disappointing. But anyway, it's enough for her yeah. to be able to uh, take the shield down and uh, Wrecker, you know, is able to uh, make quick work of the guard that is able to grab her. Yeah. I, um, they realize I, that they, they need to get out of their uh, ASAP mm -hmm. because they've obviously they've already been imprisoned. Their yeah. word of their escape is going to come out quick and they are going to get locked down forever. So they break for their to get their stuff out of what is it locked in the, the armory it's or the, somewhere it's, the hangar. it's like in the hangar conveniently close oh, yeah. to where their their ship is of all the hangars out right. of all the hangars in the entire facility on all camino it happens to be the one right next to where their ship is but i digress just before this happens we have to note that crosshair is taken from the brig he's he's basically summoned to the principal's office and this this interaction where he's in the lobotomy tube or whatever, um, Nalase and Tarkin are having a conversation about his the effic effic effectiveness of efficacy. Efficacy, thank you, of his uh, inhibitor chip. You know, Tarkin's like you're saying it may not have been affected, but he's clearly loyal to the Empire. So, um, yeah. What are the chances we can dial this sucker up to eleven? And Nala's like, we can do that. Okay, okay, do it. So. Shock therapy for crosshair. Uh, then we cut back to the team making their escape, and they make their way finally to the hangar, and they get their stuff conveniently. Um, unfortunately, they don't know what's going on with crosshair. So just like they're playing with before with Omega, we're like, okay, we gotta go find Omega, and then Omega comes to them. They don't have to go f too far to, f to find crosshair. Fortunately, he's uh he's there with some buddies in some brand new gear which kind of almost looks like um not the almost looks like the dark trooper armor actually or like a stealth commando of, mm -hmm. of some kind it's like it's similar to what his old armor was like but just has like that dark like black and green color scheme to it mm -hmm. i think it's definitely symbolic of like you know, it echoes like some religious texts like your you, your old self, your old clothes and your new clothes, mm -hmm. like they represent like his new allegiance mm -hmm. um, to the emperor and not just to the Republic. So I think it's uh, a cool little visual that they give him instead of just his old armor, hopping back into the group. Yeah. So they, uh, they encounter crosshair and there's this really, the, the, the tension finally reaches its peak. There's this showdown style shot I really love that like long corridor shot that they have of Hunter on one end and Crosshair on the other. And they're just like looking at each other from a distance. Um, that I thought that scene was pretty cool. And, and for a split second, the tables are turned, so to speak. Hunter's like, are you, is that an order? And the Crosshair laughs and is like, yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess it is. And then Hunter's like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna have to disobey that one too. So good soldiers followers. Well, but only from the right, only from a certain point of view. From a certain, from a certain point of view. So the, um, the firefight, the ensuing firefight, shows up. Some uh, smoke grenades are thrown, and then Hulk Wrecker literally like Hulk claps, Hulk smashes like the smoke away, and boomerangs these like large metal panels to to dispatch a few of the of the chorus on guard that are with him. Yeah, is Disney trying to subtly work in their Marvel universe into, into Star Wars? I feel like Hulk and Wrecker would make great friends. I feel like Thor and Wrecker would make for even better friends. At the very least, like good drinking buddies. But I digress. Um, I have to say this. So there's a scene where um, Crosshair's like, close the shuttle bay doors so they can't make their escape. And then one of the guards is pressing another unmarked white button saying, oh, this button that says nothing is not working. Therefore, it is being hacked and I can't close it. Someone's preventing me from closing the door. And then cut to Nala say, basically saying, no way, Jose. And she's the one who's preventing them from closing the door. I make no apologies for that joke. No, it's good. Thank you. It, it passes muster. So um, that move with uh, Wrecker, you know, basically clearing the smoke is good for them to, for the others to get clear shots, but it opens him up 
for a shot from Crosshair, so he's down. And uh, Hunter and Echo have to pick him up while Crosshair is is trying to take a shot. But uh, interestingly enough, and this is, um, oh, you know, she says something pretty important later on. Uh, Omega finds a blaster and she takes a, sh- a pop shot at at uh, Crosshair, and it's like it magically is perfect. She basically pulls a Greedo and shoots first, and then knocks his rifle out of it, out of his hands. I'm thinking, how is this little girl who's probably never fired a blaster before in her life? How did she make like a perfect shot? Mm-hmm. And I have a feeling it gets answered later, but for now, it's enough for uh, the gang to pick up Wrecker, get back on the ship, and uh, and clear off. Yeah. So they're able to make their escape. Yep. And so, yeah, they're they're checking out record seeing how he's doing omega walks into the cockpit she's never seen stars before it's kind of like when anakin kid anakin mm-hmm. gets on the the cruiser and um to go with qui-gon and obi-wan he's just kind of literally starstruck um <laughs> and uh and then they get the like the money shot of of going to hyperspace in a minute which is just so cool to see but the plan for them is to lay low mm-hmm. um but they know Crosshair is gunning for them, so it won't be easy. Omega asks about friends with tech equipping. That's, you know, it's a short list. Um, Not a lot going on Mm -hmm. in the friend department outside of the clones. Um, Yeah. Like now literally all of our brothers hate us and are zombies and will shoot us dead. Yeah. But but Hunter does remember one Mm -hmm. that he can think of. Tech plots a course for Sector J-19. Nothing is like said here, but we remember at some point that Hunter came across a, uh, what do you call him? A, an AWOL clone mm-hmm. um, on, on Seleucami. And it so wasn't, that's where I don't know if it was necessarily, I don't remember if it was Hunter who, but we have seen this particular clone and we have been Seleucami. Yeah. So we can, we can surmise when they say J-19, they don't say it Im- immediately, but in that desolate sector, there's at least one inhabited planet. And yep. um, and we've been there before, so we'll, we're going to see that in the next episode. For um, sure. Something I found that was kind of important is that Hunter asks her, you know, that was a nice shot. Have you have you ever fly, have you ever fired a blaster before? And she goes, no. I find that very suspicious. But instead of throwing again my hat into the, I it think was a lucky shot. What? Yeah, I, I think it's it's another for me thought like this legit could be like a little clone Jedi. Man, I've, I've heard some people say that and um, like partially I want it to happen. Uh, I've legit only seen this episode, so I really don't know if it even comes up later. Um, Yeah. So, but I'm just, again, just to pick it up. I mean, I guess it's also possible like the, the knowledge of shooting is somehow embedded in their like Mm -hmm. DNA. Um, I don't quite know how all that works. I assumed it's all training, but yeah, I don't know. But even other than that, it's got to be the force. Yeah, it could it could be other two things. Uh, well, for me, it you know, the conditional tra- the condition training that a, that a clone has gotten from youth, um, it's a, all the normal all the other clones they receive training even from from a young age. So mm-hmm. it's not it's not impossible to assume that she's received some training like that as well. Um, but I'm also theorizing that she's some sort of empath mm. and that she, you know, inherently picks up the abilities of the people around her, which is kind of, which might be a reason why she was, um, sort of kept apart from all the other clones, why we've never seen her, why she's been so sure. close to Nala say, why or like a, a medical assistant being an mm-hmm. empath would be super helpful. Like, yeah, they're feeling this, let's help them. But yeah, so it's know. it's still too soon to say. I think we know that she we know that she's special in some way. It has yet to be revealed exactly how special she is. For now, we're just she's we just know that she's a clone. She's the first female clone, and then she's got a new uh, new clone dad in Hunter and uh, the Bad Hashtag Batch clone dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, the Bad Batch will probably be better with her. So. Sweet. So the, the music of the, the crescendos mm-hmm. as tech, his fingers dance across the buttons on the keyboard, hyperdrive activates and they blast off and credits. And that is the end of this 
whatever 90 minute episode how long is crazy long? it was like 70 it was like 75 minutes yeah super so long what did you think of this first episode like what are your um what are your hopes for the rest of the series yeah i mean i love that they did this it helps to like look at the immediate like intricacies of the transition from the republic to the empire um you know seeing order 66 play out in a little bit more detail because it's like in the movies it's kind of a montage like you keep you just click, you're switching back and forth between five or six different planets and watching a few different jedi masters here you you see master palaba get killed and the emotion of of caleb seeing that happen and running um and so that was really interesting and then watching the turn of the clone army into the like mindless rule followers mm -hmm. um was really interesting to see like that the impact of the inhibitor chip i mean you hear the word inhibitor and inhibit means to like limit and so like it really it seems like it starts to turn off a lot of mental abilities and as opposed to just turning on one like command mm -hmm. it starts to literally like dumb down your um like your free will like so, yeah exactly certain cognitive abilities yeah. um how about you yeah, this is definitely the beginning of you know why the why the uh, stormtroopers were they where they are in the original trilogy, versus they had a clone army and Tarkin is basically being a bureaucrat about it. Um, so that's the answer. It's because the Empire is cheap. Yeah, that, that's why we um, got stormtroopers that couldn't shoot a bantha because they literally couldn't because they were just off they weren't really good soldiers no they, but there were a lot of them and if you fire 50 blasters out of bantha you're bound eventually to hit one, one eventually. is going to hit exactly um i personally have uh you know this is going to be like another you know misadventures with your with the crew that you that you've got kind of story and we know there's going to be 16 episodes and um you know no no spoilers for the next few because we've already seen like the first three uh there's still it feels still feels like there's a lot left of the story to tell so i'm very excited to see what the rest of the story shows and sort of a mm -hmm. revelation of how this omega character will play out in the rest of the storyline or or you know i'm really hoping that by episode 16 they don't kill off the bad batch but hopefully answers the question as to where they are or what happens to them in the rest of the star wars series like kind of like yeah. rex you know I'm yeah. also excited to see Rex because we saw in the trailer that Rex does show up somewhere in, in the Bad Batch series. Yeah. Uh, but yep. as to when and how, we don't know yet. Sure. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you all for joining us. If you like this episode, make sure you're subscribed to our podcast or get your friends to subscribe and write a review on Apple Podcasts. It's the best way for our show to become visible to new listeners. And we, we can't tell you how much that means to us. Also, please follow us on Instagram at Death Watch Podcast, on Twitter at Death Watch Cast, and on TikTok at Death Watch Cast. And if you have any questions, any comments, if we miss anything, uh, do you have a suggestion for an upcoming episode, you can feel free to email us, deathwatchpodcast at gmail.com, and we'd love to feature it on future episodes. Thanks for listening. This is the way. This is the way. <laughs>